Well, hello everybody. It's um, been quite a while since I've done any videos, and I thought it was high time I actually posted one up. Um, I think it was about six months ago when I last did the last video, so it's definitely been a while. Um, reason, basically, being life, work, running the business, and just oh, just everything's been getting in the way. Um, just you know, time time doesn't seem to be uh, of the essence these days. So I just I try and sort of fit these things in where I can. Um, yeah, well, this has been on my bench since about September of last year, and then some a series of events happened where I acquired a whole lot of stuff in a short space of time. So literally, I couldn't move out here for 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 a good good couple of months, and had to sort all the stuff that I'd acquired. So now like, all that stuff's been sorted and gone and distributed, I can now move in here again. So well, yeah, I was, so I was able to get back to this. I've been wanting to do a video on one of these TVs for a very long time, and um, as you know, the majority of my videos have all been all been been black and white uh, TV related. But um, I thought I would start looking at some of my color sets which I own, and I thought well, I thought well, probably the best, probably no better to introduce a introduce the color set that was one of my favorites is um, this one here. This is the uh, classic Philips K9. Um, these were one of the most popular and best sets ever built here in New Zealand. Um, these were a direct clone of a Danish um, design, I believe. I remember seeing um, almost identical looking TV on the net some years ago. Um, I will try and find a link um, and I'll, I'll pop the link in this video, um, or, or, or down below at some point, um, if, if, I, if, I do, if, I, if I do manage to find that, that, uh, that information again. Um, so these were built locally here in Nainai, in, in Lower Hutt, Wellington, um, and yeah, they were a direct clone of, like I said, the, the Danish design, uh, the, the Danish um, uh, 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 Philips set. And I do know a couple of people that actually went to Holland at the, back in the early 70s um, to get the blueprints to bring to, to get the blueprints and the design um, design team to like come back and actually and actually clone the set. Um, I think under the very watchful eye of Philips and Eindhoven. Um, so yeah, um, what can I tell you about it? Um, this is this is a 26 inch uh, version. They made a 22 and a 26. I've got both. Um, and um, there was a couple of variations of cabinet styles. This this was probably this one here was probably the this this was um, this is probably a later Mark One K9. Um, this this isn't an early one. There was an earlier K9 which had which had slightly 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 different different controls and a couple little wee minor cosmetic um, differences as to this one here. But um, they also came. This one's meant to have legs. Legs long gone, and they also came as as, as consoles as well, like you know, floor standing consoles or ones with the ones with the ones with the tubular tubular sort of tulip tulip bases on them, basically. So um, yeah, I've had this set since oh probably the mid to late nineteen nineties. Is 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 how long I've had it for. Um, it's in, it's in fairly it's in fairly fairly tidy condition actually really really for its age. Um, as you can see, is the, this, this is the um, the uh, control panel here. So you've got volume, uh, tone, brightness, contrast, and color. That's your power. That's a tone. Um, um, uh, that's a base base boost base base cut switch. That's your color killer, and then your six channels. Like the, along the front there. Um, I'm going down here. That's where the speaker is down there. And there's the canine emblem with the uh, with, with, with the canine badge there. Um, and here is the tuning drawer. So this is where you adjust. Uh, so where you tune in all your all your stations. Uh, between channel two and channel channel twelve. And for the ones with UHF, you flick, you flick that up, and it was 21 to 69. Now, some of most of the canines didn't have the UHF wiring loom. I think some of the early ones did, but the later canines, uh, like this one here, I don't think has got the UHF wiring loom. But all the, but basically there, there is, is, is a provision to, to, to fit, a, to fit a, a UHF tuner there. 
and um, you know, and and if you and if you can get hold hold of a loom, which I, I probably ha probably have got a loom somewhere, um, this 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 these can be this can be used for UHF. I'm pretty certain pretty certain all of the European sets were already hard hardwired for a UHF, but here we only had VHF, um, so um, there's no reason to to run the UHF tuner on these at all. Um, so yeah, it's the basically it's got this like this nice sort of padding around the picture tube itself and um just got these metal metal uh, metal decorative pieces around around the outside of, of the cabinet and so forth um and uh, yeah it is it's overall it is in fairly tidy nick um i actually i actually got this um it came it came into it to where i was working at the time and um the, the 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 lady said, you know, I'm 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 getting rid of this thing. Do you want it? And I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh, not really, not really. And she says, well, she said, it was my grandmother's TV, and it was used for only about six or seven years. And I'm like, okay, why is that? And she said, well, she said, she said the she said one day the picture went all dim on it, and uh, we had a TV technician come around and, to and to told us the tube was had it. So we just basically we basically just. She said we just put it put it in the back room and shelved it, and I thought to myself, nah, you know, these sets have to be hammered before the tube wears out. And so I, on a whim, I took it. I said, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll take it. I think it did have legs, but God knows where the legs have gone. And um, yeah, uh, it, uh, it definitely did not have a faulty tube, and I'll, I'll explain later as, as to as to what I found. Um, but um, before we before we before we disappear in, 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 into the back of the set, I might just show you the service manual. Um, unfortunately, this service manual is pretty well used. Um, but here's the service manual for the Philips K9. Probably, probably directly, uh, yeah, directly copied from from Holland. Oh, hang on, actually, it says they're printed, printed in, in, in the Netherlands. So basically, it's pretty much self-explanatory here. Um, Oh, sorry, the, I've not, I've, I've, I'm sorry about the fluoros. They're doing that pulsating thing, as for the light. But um, very, very nicely laid out manual. You know, you can, all, all the adjustments, convergence, black level vertical hold, RF, IF, AGC, variegate voltages, and it's you know you set up your chrominance and your demodulation phase, trimming data. I mean, the, these these sets these sets were made to be fixed. They were made to be worked on. They were designed properly. You know, they were. Pretty much, really quite advanced for their time, considering the amount of electronics and things, things and all the ICs that were integrated in all the modules and so forth. Um, so these are all the plug-in modules that that they that, that's on the um, these in, in the power supply board and on the on the small signal board. You've got all your IF amplifier, IF detector, demodulator, chroma luminance, line control, frame control, IF sound. You've got all your reference reference combination for your for your color. There, um, I'm sorry. I'm I'm just I'm just doing this video completely ad lib. It's not rehearsed. I'm just sort of I'm running with it. So if I do repeat myself, I or or, or say say something three times, I do apologise. Oh, that that is quite bad, isn't it? That that I might um might try and stop that strobing. So sorry about this, guys. But um, as you can see, as you can see, it's all um. That's interesting. I, interesting. I put I put my I put my hands on the fluorescent tube and it actually seems to stop it. That's quite strange. Okay, maybe, maybe I was telling a lie. But um, and here's pretty much your your flow chart here, or flow your flow chart diagram, shows you where all the signals go and and everything. It's uh, quite quite um, definitely very very uh, comprehensive there. Um, I'm, 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 I'm not. I am not. I'm not. I'm not going to pause this video. That's for sure. I'm not going to pause it and start again. I've already already had it. Already had three or four reruns at it. Um, did you try to put it down? Maybe, 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 maybe put it down here. Oh, that's better. That's better. <clears throat> so there's your there's your there's your flow chart there basically. So turn the page. And here's the um, showing the print side of the board. And all, all your all your all your component like all your component component lo location numbers and so forth. Um, so that's the that's the large signal panel. That's your tube tube neck board or CRT baseboard. 
uh, that's the power supply. And over here, we've got the uh, small signal panel, which does all your video, sound, IF, RF, all that, all that, all that, all that jargon. Basically, on this board here is all your, your flyback, vertical, horizontal, time-based, pin, pin pushing, pin cushion correction, and line oscillator, all that sort, all that sort of carry on. Um, but yeah, really, really nicely laid out. Well, you know, with all the volt, you know, with even even voltage voltage reference points and all sorts of things. Really, really great. Um, moving along here, you've got your so your deflection yoke. That must be, be for your your all your red, green, and blue, all your convergence um, magnets and so forth. That's for the degaussing coil, and this is your convergence board here. Um, and that is the front panel control, uh, the switch bank, and it's the you know, there's a, there's a mains mains filter board um, inside. It's actually tucked in behind here, but I'll I'll, I'll show you I'll show you I'll show you this anyway. But, um, yeah, no, any um, any 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 of you uh, any of you uh, TV service technicians in New Zealand who watch my videos, I'm sure I'm sure this I'm sure this is uh, this is all very very familiar. Familiar, ter familiar territory to you guys, um, and yes, yeah, another one here with all the waveform reference points and things and voltages and what what you should get. Which is, yeah, it's bloody, it's bloody fantastic. Just you know, you could fix these things. You know, you could fix them in the house. And like today, you just basically go and take it off the wall and change a board or a, or replace you know change a board or a power supply. And, and if it's a screen while the TV's basically stuffed, time to buy a new one. So um, yeah, I've been fiddling. I've been, I've, I mean, I've been, 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 been mucking around with these TVs since since I was a bit, since I was a teenager. And now I'm a, now I'm a mid to late forty, so it's been you know quite a long time. So um, I've fixed a lot of these over the years. I've I've, I've 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 probably fixed hundreds of these things over the years. Fixed them, sold them, and wrecked them, and all sorts. And there, here's the circuit diagram. Um, it's quite it's quite interesting how each section is each section is each section is, is actually color coded back to the back to the spec to the actual circuit board so you know what you know which board to actually go to um, everything's you know every single transistor has got a voltage on its base collector emitter and all your supply rails are there you know it, it, yeah it doesn't get any better than this really it does not get any better in my honest opinion um so there you go it's pretty much a look at the um service manual um over the page here we've got a there's a parts list here um here's your deflection yoke here's your purity rings and everything there as well let's just let's just do not do not lose or something. Do not or do not use refer parts list attached. So this could have actually very well been uh, been a been a been a, a, du a Dutch set. It may have been slightly different. All the part numbers could have been potentially dif different too in regards to the our native models here. Oh, and this is like a flow. This is like a flow chart. No pitch and no no brightness. No con no bright no contrast. No brightness. No picture, no sound. So basically, you, you actually you, you use a flow chart to sort of, sort of narrow down as to where the where the fault lies. And I, I remember actually when I first started playing with color TVs and, and getting interested in, in especially learning about about these about these K9s. I used to I used to I used to use these flow charts and actually learnt a fair bit actually, learnt a fair bit indeed. So yeah, for everything, vertical hole, no horizontal sink. Horizontal centering's off, you know. It's, it's <laughs> there you go. From frame collapse, lack of vertical height, lack of vertical lack of lack of horizontal width or pin cushion, east west, north south, east west cor correction issues, com horizontal time based complete collapse. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, really, really good, really, really good. So, and I think the actual back part's missing off this. I think this is just maybe the oh, this is just all the all the all the voltage 
looks like looks like something to do. Oh, yeah, it was all the plug and modules there. It's all the all the voltage reference points and everything on there. So what, what what should be on each pin and what should be there and what signal should be there and so forth. So that's pretty much the service manual. <coughs> I'll try and I'll try and fold it back up without making a complete friggin' mess of it. Um, but um, what I will do, I am going to pause the camera, put it down, and I'll swing this beast around and I can let can let you all look at the look at the most look at the real uh, the real the real good stuff, the stuff you all been waiting for, the internals. So um, let me just straighten up, and I will be back in a sec. And here is the part you've probably all been waiting for. Da 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 the the guts of the thing the back the back the back door the back passage whatever you want to call it <laughs> the internals of this glorious TV. So here is the large signal panel here. This is pretty much what one looks like. Um, that's the large signal panel. That's your focus control down there, and um, you know, er, er, you know, everything, everything's nicely marked. All your pots are marked, height, linearity, all that sort of carry on. There's your pin cushion correction there, width, centering, north south correction. Um, I got pretty good at fixing these. I had a I had a fault book with all the known faults that these things had. And um, yeah, I, you know, I was I was I was I was pretty I was pretty good at fixing these, and um, there's even quite funny even even fiddling even fiddling around with this one here, um, you know all the all the all the faults and all the all the, the all the all the faults and all the things I remember all came flooding back, <laughs> as they do. This is a small signal panel which houses all the RGB, all the color drive, color difference amplifiers, demodulators, it's all the. This is where all the all the real stuff happens on this side here. Um, I'm just trying to make this video as, as in depth and as interesting as possible because I'm not really sure if there are any real videos or in depth videos on YouTube about, about the Philips K9. There, there, there probably are. I, I, I just I just haven't I haven't actually come across any as of yet. Mind you, haven't really gone and looked either. So um, yeah, and uh, well, that's. Self-explanatory. It's just your, C your your CRT baseboard. Down in there is the power supply. Um, now I'm not going to take the power supply out um, because it's a bit of a pain. But Tom, I have got a spare power supply which I will show you when I when I when I get to that. Right. So let's open the large signal panel. There are normally two screws down here, um, but we're going to open it up. One thing I will say about this set, it is it is, it is really it is really original. Like it, I don't think this set has actually seen a lot of use, because when I first got it, I was astounded at the lack of dry joints that it had and how original it was. Um, I have replaced a few components as basically preventive maintenance. Um, there was a little issue with some of the with with adjusting the. Um, um, East West correction. There was some I couldn't get it quite right, and there were a couple of these. The couple of small value electric had gone a bit wonky. I replaced them, and I was, I was able to actually adjust things properly again. But um, what you're seeing is essentially pretty much an all original TV. Um, you know these. I mean, and how I know it hasn't had a lot of use is because generally these resistors down here they get hot, and all the paint falls off them. Um, you can see even up there as well. I mean, I mean, I mean, it's definitely seen use, but it's it's not unlike you know. I've 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 fixed I've fixed heaps of these things, you know, and um, even especially getting into here, generally the paint is all gone off these. There are all the paints fallen off, and you know it's always discolored and blackened down on there. Always discolored, but this one here is actually pretty good, as you can see. Um, and um, yeah, that triplers. Even that tripler's probably quite old. There, there, would, there wouldn't be the original. There would not be the original tripler, but um, 
In fact, I seem to recall seeing those actually in the Thorn 9000s. I seem to use those triplers, I've noticed, in, 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 in the Thorn TVs. But um, yeah, normally the paint on the focus resistors is normally gone. But um, no, it all, all still seems to be there. And original, uh, original uh, lineup or transformer as well. But um, yeah, there were the 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 these had their known faults. The biggest one was the 11 n 5 tuning flyback capacitor. Um, that cap was renowned for going open or leaky or even going short. What would happen if that cap would go open? The EHT would actually rise up to I think 30 plus kV, and it would actually flash over inside the tube and actually put a pinhole 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 in, in the neck of the tube and actually destroy the CRT. Um, or flash over and actually destroy other things like transistors and ICs on the on the, on the modules because of the sheer the sheer static discharge to ground. So um, yeah, that cap was a very very common cap for failing, and that's a, uh, the first thing I did when I got this TV is I, I, I had the original one in it and it was still going, so I, I changed it. Um, another one here is a point double eight five six. Um, I can't think of what part of the circuit it's in, but I think it's I think it's to do with um, do with do with um, um, to do with EHT regulation. That cap starts going leaky and starts getting hot. Um, basically, it causes picture blooming and tripping and all sorts of weird things. Picture instability and that's another cap that um, was commonly failing, commonly failed. And I said I basically I, I, I fitted that with a new old, new old stock on recently. Um, and the other fault too are these diodes. These 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 diodes here. Um, they have red ones. Now I've got those diodes somewhere. If I can, here we go. Actually, I've actually got the pieces. Here we are. Just remember that actually, I've actually got some of the bits I actually changed in here. So, um, yeah, so there's the, that's the cap, that, that that's the original cap that sat, that came out of there. And these four diodes, um, BYX, BYX 55350s, um, these diodes here uh, were shocking. For going leaky, um, you know, and they basically, basically, they set There's one there, one there, one there, and one there. And the, and the amount of problems that these these diodes caused, um, mainly convergence issues, not not not, not able to get the convergence correct, um, weird geometry problems. Um, yeah, there was a whole. I'm just trying to think. There was a whole sort of. There was a whole sort of list of problems that were caused by these diodes going leaky. Um, so basically the, the, basically every every set I fixed, I, I, I changed them all with BYV 96Cs. And um, luckily I actually managed to find some among, 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 among on, my, on my spare parts. Because, um, yeah, these diodes here were, were still in. In there, so I've, um, those three, I've, those three, I've, I've, those four, I've, I've recently changed those. And funnily enough, it actually made no difference, to, no difference to the performance of the TV, which would indicate that, indicate that this set has had bugger all use because mostly, most of the sets I've worked on have all, all had high hours, and those diodes have all been shot. So it's definitely another indication. So, um, uh, what else used to go wrong with these things? Um, yeah, triplers, triplers would go, um, lopties would fail. Um, yeah, these these caps would go leaky, or they'd go, they'd change value, and and you'd have you'd have vertical vertical issues, height issues, or linearity issues. Um, what else would go wrong with these things? Yeah, these these lock for transistors. Yeah, 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 they did. You know, did have, they, yeah. These these TVs. They they were they were good, but when they when they started to break down, when they when age when age started when when age started started piling up on these TVs, they they some of them you had really good ones and you had ones that were just were so unreliable. You'd fix one thing, another thing would go wrong. You know, I mean, remember there was I remember there was one one customer. I think I went back to his house about ten times, and I said to him, "Look, I said, look, I'm sorry. I said, look, this is I said, look, this canine is just is you know it's it, it, it's becoming a liability." I said, "Look, I, look, I've, I've been here close to ten times. Look, I'm sorry. I said, look, 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 as much as much as I want to keep, as much as I want to save this TV, it's time to replace it." Um, you know, I think he did. I think he brought a, I think he brought a, a Panasonic TV. And he's probably still got it. It's probably still going. Knowing, knowing him. Um, 
but um, yeah, yeah, so yeah, you know, you know yeah, basically electrodes and again, dry joints were really, really bad on these. You know, the soldering was soldering generally was pretty, was pretty atrocious on these things, um, or it's around the lop D and uh, you know around the um, lop D around the yoke plug and some of the some of the uh, pin cushion correction transformers and things and the the pots and controls and in, anywhere really with heat. Um, and you know, in fact. You know there are no there are no dry joints around this area here. I, I've just basically I've mainly just soldered soldered the the, the known areas up because I, I actually want to start using the set upstairs in in my lounge for um for, for doing retro gaming and watching uh what, what watching videos and things on watching old videos and stuff. That's my plan anyway because um yeah I'm using a little little bloody little bloody nineteen inch Sanyo. It doesn't quite cut the mustard. Um, I think this, this, this will be far better being a 20 because it's having a far having a bigger screen. Um, so um, yeah, so um, moving over here I've, I, now, I've only got I've only got an, I've only got a uh, I'm going to have to watch the time. I've only got I've only got about 55 minutes of recording time on my on my memory on my memory card on my phone. So I might just have to speed it up a little bit and stop waffling. <laughs> So um, you move over to the side here, and we'll open up the side. And here's here's where all the magic happens over here. So try and uh, move that light out of the way. Oh, anyway, hold on. I'll just clip that, clip that, clip that back on. So put that, put that back on there. Um, so yeah, this is where all the. Uh, all the audio, video, and RGB um, all happens, and um, yeah, so this is where it all happens over here. As you can see, you've got uh, all these all these plugger modules as well. Uh, you'll pull that out a bit more. Here we go. I'll pull this out a wee bit more so you can sort of see it a bit better. Uh, hang on, I'll try and move the light so it's not going to be such a pain. But um, yeah. So this is pretty much this side here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, this is this, this is this is the audio stage up here. This is your 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 um. This is your your um. Of um. Uh, video, video, RGB, video, 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 am, am, video amplification there, up there. Um, this is all your sort of your, your, your sort of tuner R, IF, IF and RF, and you've got your delay lines there and your chroma lumens and things all all around the place. And um, yeah, there here is, is all these plugger modules. So you've got IF amplifier, IF detector. You've got chroma luminance there. You've got demodulator, a reference com for your color, IF sound there, line control, and frame control. There's actually a there's actually a a a, 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 a linearity control in there actually, and that one there adjusts adjusts your your horizontal lock as well. But um, these 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 modules are quite cool. I I I, I love love the modules the construction of them, and of course you, you know of course. There are a number of issues that these modules would cause: um, no color, no sound, no vertical, no vertical hold, no signal. There's a whole, again, a whole list of faults that there. If these modules packed up, that um, you know, you, all you do, you, you wouldn't fix the module. You'd actually, you'd actually just um, just replace it. But luckily, I've got a whole bag of them down here, so <laughs> I'll, so I don't actually have to pull them out. So let's go into the let, let's let's go into the goodie bag and pull one out, shall we? So, maybe look here. Uh, what have we got here? We've got okay. Well, here's a here's a here's a chroma luminance module made in April of 1973. So basically, these TVs were pretty much made to be released here in New Zealand for the Commonwealth, Commonwealth Games in 1974. So that was the aim of actually getting these sets out and on the market. And I do believe I do believe there was actually a waiting list for these things. You actually had to wait for your set. I, I think you ordered your set, and I think you waited several weeks, maybe even even up to a month, to get it initially because there was there was such a high demand for them back then. 
since, since, since we got color in 74. But um, yeah, so here's a nice little module there with some ICs and some caps and bits and pieces. You know, really, really nicely made too. Um, really, really nicely made. So um, that's pretty much the chrome aluminates module on there. Um, TBA 560B. Oh, I've got heaps of these modules actually, all, all tucked all in, a, in, a, in a box somewhere. But uh, I've got I've got these ones from work actually. So um, this one here is an IF detector. So you've got all your all your all your peaking coils and things on there, and few transistors and chokes and caps and all sorts of things. So it's quite interesting. So on there. Um, Um, let's look here. One here called line, line control, September seventy four. A couple of ICs on there. Really cool, really really cool. Um, yeah, just just um, just you know, I I've, 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 I always always enjoy working on these TVs, you know, and. It's, even though I haven't 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 serviced these sets for a, for a living for many many years, you know, when I come back to especially working on this one, especially when I was been working on this one, it was just just it was you know just like the old days, you know, it's fun, it's cool. Um, um, yeah, so oh, I've got here. Here's your here's your, 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 your here's your demodulator one in there. It's got a Texas Instruments IC on that one, but um, yeah, the, these these modules. To be honest, the, the modules that really only seem to fail seem to be the the ones the ones to do with the ones to do with with the chroma, chroma luminance and uh, the frame control on IF sound. But you know, generally the I like the, the IF detector amplifier modules. I've, ne I've I've never actually had those actually give much grief, but that's what's coming back to. That's what was wrong with this TV. Um, the IF amplifier module basically had, had fallen over, Went, and when I, when I powered it up, it came up with a really, really weak, washed-out pitch. And I thought to myself, "That's not a tube. That, that's that, that's 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 something in the in the front. That's something in the in the front end's gone down. It's just not. There's no gain. There's nothing." So I went out went, went out to the garage and fossed around in all my bits and chucked chucked in that IF amplifier, turned it on and greeted and was greeted with really, really good snow. I was like, "Wow!" And I, I remember, remember at the time I tuned. Remember the time I plugged I pl I plugged in an aerial and holy hell, what a great picture! It was perfect. I was like, wow, well there you go. No, I've got you know, so I've got to you know, I thought to myself, well, this is definitely a set worth hanging on to because it was low hours. Um, and again, too, normally up here, normally up here, riddled with dry joints. And I've, I've, I'm over here. I've only really, only really sold it a handful, like up here. I mean, the rest of it are completely left alone. So yeah, amazing.